And so you and I are called and sent to do the, this work for Jesus. But there's a second thing in this too. And the second thing is this. The church needs Jesus. Because when we don't have Jesus, we often find ourselves filled with fear. We lose our way. We can't get anything done. We end up afraid and overwhelmed and paralyzed. And finally, the church, um, as it finds itself sent out into the world the, way, the same way the Father sent Jesus out, we have to recognize that, that Jesus, uh, Jesus has a certain amount of success because he's obedient. And so the church becomes, I think, successful as it is, a, oh, it is obedient to the divine will. And this is the part that gets so difficult. I think. Now notice what happens next. Jesus breathes on them. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are, they are retained. And um, this, uh, th there are a variety of ways to interpret this, but if the principal work of the church is reconciliation, then forgiveness is a big part of that. It's a big part of that, and that's why our colleague this morning says what it does. Uh, it says, Almighty and everlasting God, who in the pastoral mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation. See, that's the work of the church in the world. It's reconciling the world back to God, back to our Creator. And the thing about this, breathe, he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. It reminds us of God the Father's creation of Adam. In chapter 2 of Genesis, uh, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. It reminds us of chapter 37 in Ezekiel that I like so much about the, the Valley of Dry Bone. And God asks, is it healed? Can these bones live? And then God says to the wind, come from the four corners, come, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And so the coming of the Holy Spirit is like the awakening of life from the dead. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon the church, she is recreated for her task which is the reconciliation of the world. And so Jesus comes into this room full of, that's full of fear, and he sends the fear away. He gives them a mission, and he empowers them with the gift of the Holy Spirit to accomplish that mission. So this very little story is full of good things. It's absolutely full of good things. And Thomas is missing. <laughs> now, where is he? Well, I don't know that we're ever told where he is. But sometimes sin separates us from the truth. So we, we don't know if he's off because he's pouting. We don't know if he's, if he's withdrawn because he's so upset by the crucifixion. We don't know. And when he returns and they tell him they've seen the Lord, uh, he is skeptical. Well, you'd be skeptical too. If somebody told you that someone you loved was alive, and you, you, you'd seen them put into their tomb. I mean, that would just, what? No. And you would say something like Thomas did. Well, unless I can see the wounds and put my hand into those wounds and put my hand into his son, I'm not going to believe it. And that would not be unreasonable skepticism. And so Jesus appears a week later, and he says, Thomas, Come here and put your hands where my wounds are so that you can do it. And Jesus is the, the true friend that Thomas needs, who provides what Thomas needs so that he can believe. And Thomas responds quickly by falling to his knees and saying, my Lord and my God. It is a confession of absolute belief. And then Thomas is sent out with the rest of the disciples to do what he's given to do. And the story, there's an apocryphal, um, there's a story of a non canonical biblical book, uh, I think it's actually the Gospels of Thomas, that tells us about the story of Thomas being convinced.
convinced to go to India. And it's, uh, once again, he's just very reluctant. But then once he's convinced that he has to do it, he does do it. And the church in India still bears his name. It's called the Martoma Church uh, of Thomas. Uh, now, I, I think for us, what we have to get out of this is that Jesus has come back uh, to life uh, for us as well as for the disciples. And we are, we are also empowered to do this work of reconciliation in the world. That Trinity Church has been put back into place after being at the bottom of the ocean for a purpose. And we've been empowered to help rebuild this community. And so I hope you'll take this mission very seriously and you wonder, well, where is everybody? I mean, the place was pretty well full last week, wasn't it? And at 10.30, it was more than full. We, we got 150 of these nice new chairs. We had 165 or 168 people in here. It was kind of crowded. Well, where is everybody this week? Well, it's wonderful to, to hear the message, but doing the work of the church, there's always fewer people. So just accept your mission, accept that you've been empowered by Jesus, and go out and do the work. Bring, invite your friends to church. Say, come on, you, you need to see this. You need to be part of this body. Because the work in the community goes on. The work in our lives goes on. And so please, invite your friends. Take the mission seriously. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.